Hi, my name is Emily Moss. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment for Girls Who Code Campus. Today we're going to talk a little bit about our newest summer program, a series of two-week courses for girls ages 10 to 18. We're going to talk a little bit about the organization, Girls Who Code. We're going to give an overview of campus. We'll meet some of our girls and we'll talk about how to apply. So the mission and history of Girls Who Code is pretty simple. Girls Who Code programs work to inspire, educate, and equip girls with the computing skills to pursue 21st century opportunities. Our vision is to reach gender parity in computing and technology sectors. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means. There are about 500,000 open jobs in computing right now, but only 40,000 computer science graduates every year. And what that means is that there's a whole host of opportunities for girls that are competitive and ambitious and creative and want to take those jobs. And when we talk about jobs in this field, yes, there are software development jobs, yes, there are coding jobs, but it's also broader 21st century skills around collaboration, critical thinking, uh, computational thinking, and all of the skills adjacent to computer science like product management and project management and user experience design. So the real big issue that we try to tackle at Girls Who Code is the percentage of women in the computing workforce. And you might think that this is a number that goes up, but actually, historically, over the last 20 years, it's been going down. In 1995, it was 37%, but today it's only 24%. Why do you think that is? There's a couple of really interesting reasons that we've seen that number go down. One of them is sort of the rise of video games and the ways that kids get excited about coding when they're young, which leads them to careers in computer science and studying computer science in school. And since a lot of computer games are marketed and targeted at boys, we're seeing girls not starting quite as young. But another piece of it is around role models. And there's this great saying, you can't be what you can't see. And girls right now are looking up at leaders in the tech industry, and they're not seeing women that look like them. And they're not seeing role models and inspiring figures. So if you think about when that started, you think about the tech leaders of today, they were the, the, early, the early leaders in the field. And girls now don't have anyone to look up to. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to fill this pipeline. When you think about why there are not very many girls in tech and women in tech, there's a million different places on that pipeline that we start to go wrong. It's early stuff about who gets which toys and how programs and toys are marketed to kids. It's stuff that happens in high school about girls not wanting to be the only girl in a computer science class or club. It's things that happen in college about how courses are structured and who's recruited into what major. It happens later on in life when girls who are uh, working in the field, women who are working in the field, don't see themselves getting promoted or hired or trained, um, and there's sort of a hostile work environment. So this is called the pipeline, and we look at a lot of different ways that we can adjust that. And so where Girls Who Code steps in is middle school and high school girls. Um, and we are trying to fill that early stage in the pipeline so that by the time girls get to college, um, there's lots of them in the classrooms. They don't feel like the only one. They have friends and peers, and they have lots of role models. So you can see here that over the last five years, we've had 40,000 girls go through our programs. So speaking of our programs, what do we have to offer? We have our clubs program that is during the school year. Uh, it's nationwide. It's a free program. And schools, libraries, and community centers will organize after school and weekend clubs. Sort of a low commitment, once or twice a week, dip your toe in, get excited, meet other girls. And then at the bottom in the green, you'll see our sort of intensive summer immersion program. This is just for 11th and 12th grades. It's about getting ready for college, thinking about whether computer science could be a major or minor for you. And it's seven weeks long, so it fills up your whole summer. In the middle, this is our new program. This is what we're talking about today. It's Girls Who Code Campus. This is for 6th to 12th grade, so a nice big age range. Um, we're in select cities, and it's only two weeks long. Some of the feedback we got about our summer immersion program is that lots of kids, although they're excited about Girls Who Code, can't commit to seven weeks. So what we've done is created two-week courses that dive deep on exciting new topics. Our stuff is working. Over the last five years in the history of Girls Who Code, we always ask our girls, you know, are you considering studying computer science? Are you considering majoring or minoring in a closely related field? Um, and the numbers are really strong. Now, our program is only five years old, so our oldest students are in college now, but we are seeing them in computer science courses, picking this major and minor, um, or even being involved in computer societies, women in computing groups, leading other girls into computer science, and really growing that pipeline. 
So what is Canvas? This is our newest program. It's in this summer, 2018. Here we go. So I'm going to play this little video from our tiny pilot program last year so you can see what the girls themselves had to say. I was always interested in coding, but I never knew much about it. I feel like this helped me gain more confidence. Before I came to Girls Who Code, I knew nothing about coding, but I knew it was important to learn about. Definitely go for it. I was able to use like my passion for art with coding. Aside from the knowledge that you gain, you also just build really good relationships. My favorite part was making new friends and meeting new people. I didn't know Anna before. I didn't know anyone before. Girls who come became this bag of Lay's chips that I just couldn't stop eating. So that's a little bit from our test pilot last year where we worked on our curriculum, hired amazing instructors, and made sure that Campus was going to be a great program. This summer in 2018, we've expanded, and here are the basics about Campus. Campus is beginner and advanced coding courses for middle and high school girls in a condensed two-week timeline. We really want this to be available to girls who also want to pursue music or sports or other exciting summer camps, maybe travel with their family or work. So the sort of four big things here is you are going to learn computer science fundamentals and dive deep on really exciting new topics. We're going to talk about our courses in just a minute. But all of our curriculum is grounded in computer science teaching fundamentals. You're going to gain exposure to tech jobs. So there's what's out there. Learn about the universe of jobs that are open and available and are waiting for girls like you. Build 21st century skills like bravery, confidence, and resilience. Joining a supportive sisterhood, this is so important. There are 40,000 other girls that have been through Girls Who Code programs. You will bring your sisterhood with you when you leave the program. You will have girls to ask questions of, to get support from, to participate in other programs with. When you go to college, you'll find other girls that did Girls Who Code when you get to campus. And lastly, this is summer. It's important that you're there to make friends and have fun. Our curriculum is designed to be fun and hands-on, project-based, so you can bring your ideas and work with other girls to make projects come to life. Where is campus? So we are in seven metro areas this summer, and our programs are hosted on high school and college campus. Excuse me, on high school and college campuses. We're in San Francisco in the South Bay. We're in Los Angeles. We're in a couple of different schools in the Denver Boulder area. We're in the Twin Cities. Chicago, DC and Baltimore, and New York City. So what are we offering? We have four different courses this year. Starting in the top left, this green course. This is our introduction to computer science. It's for girls ages 10 to 14. We use Scratch and Makey Makey to explore computer science basics. This is great prep if you're new to coding or if you've done a Girls Who Code Club but you really want to uh, cement those fundamentals. Um, then moving to the right in the red box, website design and development. So this is a little more advanced. Um, but it's still totally appropriate for someone who's new. We'll move quick through concepts, but there's lots of support. This is using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Our bottom two courses are the newest courses. They're specialized and they're more advanced. We have wearable tech and fashion design. So if you've ever think about things like Fitbits or other devices that are on your body, healthcare devices, medical devices, but also fashion, how do you incorporate tech and hardware, things that literally sit on your body? This is going to be a really creative, hands-on class. If you like working with your hands and digging into robotics and using a lily pad Arduino, which is a circuit board kit, um, this is the right course for you. And then we have an iPhone app development course because everyone has ideas for how to make apps, things that they want to see in the App Store. So this course will be using Swift and Xcode, uh, and you'll be actually brainstorming and building apps throughout the class. So who teaches these, co these courses? Um, Girls Who Code instructors and teaching assistants. It's really important to distinguish that these are not uh, camp counselors or babysitters. We hire seasoned teachers and tech industry professionals. People we hire have both technical experience and teaching experience so that you have a really amazing experience on campus. Uh, we also will have TAs on campus, graduate and undergraduate students in computer science, and they'll also be talking about their experience studying computer science in college. 
all of our instructors will go through a Girls Who Code training program. So we're not just throwing people into the classroom, we're making sure that they're equipped and ready to teach. One other important note that at Girls Who Code, at least one instructor in every classroom will be a woman. We think that's so important for girls to be able to see women in this profession, studying this subject that they can look up to and ask questions of. So here are two examples of our instructors. Galen on the left here is a professional software engineer at a telemedicine startup. She's super excited about breaking down these stereotypes, especially around the fact that coding is quote unquote dry and uncreative. She can't wait to show girls how exciting and creative coding can be. Robin is a PhD student in mathematics right now, and she's new to teaching campus, but she's actually been a lead instructor with Girls Who Code over summers past, working at IBM and Microsoft. She's just so excited to bring the sisterhood component to this course. So what's a campus day like? Week one, you're going to spend time doing hands-on activities and tutorials using our platform HQ. So this is sort of the platform you'll be using to get new activities, to get help and guidance. Everything is created by us here at Girls Who Code. There's also stretch work for people who are a little more advanced. There's more support if you need more help. And you'll be mixing up solo work and group projects. Your instructors will also be on hand to make sure that you're getting these core computer science fundamentals so that we can build on that as the session goes on. We have women in tech spotlights, so you'll learn about different avenues for exploring technology, the intersection with tech and your other interests, maybe art, music, science, sports, healthcare, and occasionally we'll even bring in speakers for you to meet too. In the second week, you'll work on capstone projects. So after building all these fundamentals, you'll brainstorm and create ideas for things that you want to make, whether it's an app or a game or a website, and then you'll actually put it into practice. We get a lot of questions about what kinds of projects students make here, um, and it can be any number of things. We really encourage girls to think about issues and how they can use tech to solve problems in their real lives, whether it's cyberbullying or protecting the environment um, or drawing attention to international issues, um, or maybe it's something fun. Maybe it's a game. Maybe it is a tribute to your favorite musician uh, that involves sort of an amazing website. We've seen all kinds of projects. So what do you take with you after campus? First and foremost, your friends. This sisterhood, among other girls, is one of the key components of campus and all of our Girls Who Code programs. To make that real and tangible, you will get access to Loop, which is our alumni network, and Hire Me, which is our internship and job platform for older girls. So these are ways you'll keep in touch with the girls in your program and meet other girls from Girls Who Code. You'll bring your projects with you. If you're getting ready for more advanced courses or thinking about college applications, you'll have some projects to speak to. You'll also get to keep any of your materials. So for example, the Arduino kit that you'll use in the wearable project. And lastly, a certificate of completion that documents your work. These are some of our amazing girls. You have no idea how smart and creative and ambitious they are. You will work with these kinds of girls across your projects. In our pilot program last year, we got some testimonials from girls that participated and helped us develop this program. One of the things I want to call out from Sarah, who was in New York, is that it was about the coding, but it was also about confidence, learning to try new things, to make mistakes, to share work, to get feedback. And that's something that everybody struggles with, but if you want to learn to code, it's one of the key skills you have to build. I also want to call out Jocelyn, who was part of our Boulder, Colorado program, who talked about how meeting her instructor and learning what she did, things like hackathons, competitions, being part of coding communities was a big takeaway for her from the program. So let's get into the details. The campus classroom. Student-teacher ratio is going to be 10 to 1 or less. We want to make sure you have a great experience with your instructors and TAs. So about 20 kids per class at most. Each course is two weeks long, runs Monday to Friday, and keep in mind campus courses are like day camp. They're from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's not an overnight program and we don't provide housing. Students will bring their own lunch and we are sensitive to allergies and we'll make sure that everybody has stuff that works for them. Tuition varies by market and course between $14.99 and $21.99. Um, and then we also, of course, have full scholarships available. So you can apply if your family qualifies for a full scholarship and take one of these amazing courses. Lastly, if you're watching this video as a little bit of an incentive, we've got a code for you to use virtual uh, to save $100. Dates and details. So every city is a little bit different, but each session is two week long and they these are sort of the typical dates from June through the middle of August. You can find the full schedule of courses in your city at girlswhocode.com campus. Registration. 
Go to that same website, girlswhocode.com slash campus to register. And a few quick notes. There are multi-session and multi-student discounts that are available. So if you and a friend or you and a sister want to register together or you want to take two courses, we have a small discount available there. We've got this special code for you for watching this video virtual to add a little extra sweetener to the pot. And I should mention that enrollment is limited. This will be filled first come, first serve. So if there's a particular course you want, it's in your interest to register quickly. Scholarships are need-based and filled first come, first served as well. There will be a wait list if we have additional interest for scholarships, and I encourage you to apply quickly. If you have any questions, I'm available. My name is Emily Moss. You can email me here, emily.moss at girlswhocode.com, or you can check our website, www.girlswhocode.com campus. Thank you.